What happens when a person commits suicide? You know, when I was in student ministry, I had a teenager. His name was Ricky. Ricky was, uh, he, he was fun-loving. He was, I, I always remember him smiling. He, he had this big afro that all the girls, they loved messing with his hair. Ricky came with us to youth camp, youth convention. And I'll never forget the place where I was at when I got the call that Ricky had ended his life. I'll, I'll never forget it. The funeral, uh, it was standing room only. There was, uh, all of his classmates were there, and they were all crying and, and hugging. His, his family, could, if you can just only imagine, were completely devastated. I remember looking into that casket, seeing Ricky, and I had, I had a million questions going through my mind. In fact, I could take you today to the grave that Ricky's grave there at the Restland Funeral Home in Garland today. And unfortunately, I've been in ministry long enough that I have walked with family after family after family after family through the tragedy of suicide. And so when I answer this question today, I'm not just casually answering this. This is, this is a topic that has impacted me very deeply and to every person that's watching this, that you have been through the tragedy of suicide, I just want you to know that as this pastor here, my heart goes out to you because whenever I see people hurting, my heart hurts for them. See, they tell us right now in the world, the statistics tell us that one million people this year will commit suicide in the world. Last year, suicide rates in America were 40,000 people. I have a hunch that that number is going to be ramped up because of the COVID-19 pandemic and people have hopelessness happening in their life right now. It's double the murder rate in America. It's the number one killer of teenagers or kids, 15 to 24. And I just want to say this, that if you know anybody that is struggling in the area of suicide, I would highly recommend, please hear me, I would recommend that you call this number right here. And talk to somebody that is a professional that can help you. In fact, these people will help talk them out of making a, a wrong choice off of a real feeling that they're experiencing at this present moment. In fact, the bottom line question that you're asking honestly is this. When someone commits suicide, do they go to heaven or do they go to hell? And before I answer that, I want to just follow along two lines of thinking of kind of things that I heard when I was growing up, and maybe you heard these two different lines of thought as well. And the first one is that I heard people make the argument that when you commit suicide, you're actually committing murder. And they would use scriptures like this, that anybody who hates his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life in them. Another line of thought that people would use to argue is that when you commit suicide, you don't have a chance, an opportunity to confess that sin and to repent. And hey, everybody, if that was the case, it would really stink for the person that would be involved in a freak car accident, that, it, that they weren't even planning it, and at the last second of their life, they let out a curse word. Like, hey, everybody, that's not how salvation works, because if that was the case, we'd all have to live on pins and needles for the rest of our life, and any time that we would ever make a mistake or sin, we would need to confess that thing to the Lord because heaven, heaven help us if the rapture happened and we didn't confess that sin at that exact moment, huh? Hey, everybody, that's not how salvation works. To which you're asking the question, all right, then what does the Bible say? Two things I want you to know. Number one, many biblical characters got discouraged and actually prayed to die. In fact, I'm going to give you a couple of them right now. One, his name was Moses. Moses probably saw the miraculous touch of God on his life and through him more than pretty much any other person that's ever lived on this planet. And yet Moses, just like you and me, he got massively discouraged to the point that he wanted to die. Look at this, what it says in Numbers. It says, if God, he's speaking to God right now, and this is bad theology, by the way. He was assessing his circumstance uh, through the wrong lens, all right? He's, he pointed his finger back at God. He said, if this is how you're going to treat me, please go ahead and just kill me. Uh, Jonah, look what he said. He said, now, Lord, 
take my life, for it is better for me to die than to live. Look what Elijah, what, what, what came about in his life. He came to a broom bush, sat down under it, and he prayed that he might die. And look what he prayed. He said, I've, I've had enough, Lord. And maybe you're joining us and you're thinking, that's exactly where I'm at. I've, I've had enough. Life is just too much the weight of it all. And he said, take my life. And you just need to know today that if you've had thoughts of suicide, you're in good company. Because the Bible makes it very clear that some of the great legends of the faith actually battled with the same thoughts. Here's the second principle that I want you to see out of Scripture, and that's this. There are people in the Bible who committed suicide, and some of them went to heaven, and some went to hell. So there were folks that committed suicide, like Samson. And he went to heaven. His name is listed in the great hall of fame of faith in Hebrews chapter 11. Samson is in heaven. But then there are others that committed suicide, like King Saul and Judas, that the Bible makes it very clear that they are in hell. To which brings me to the question of the day. Hey, Chris, what do you think about it? Because I know that you want to know what my thoughts are on this, this whole topic. And, and honestly, my answer may shock you. And this, this is my answer. Suicide is a topic that the Bible is actually somewhat silent about. And personally, I would not want to walk into my eternity with any kind of uncertainty about where my eternal place is going to be. It's almost as if God comes alongside and he wants to deal with each person individually. So I personally believe that somebody can be underneath the grace of God, commit suicide, and go to heaven just like Samson. Now, please don't misunderstand me. I am not saying that it's okay to commit suicide. I'm, I'm not saying that at all. Please hear me. It is not okay. Because even though the person that commits suicide, they get to escape their problems, they leave behind for all of the, their family and friends all kinds of questions, pain, and sorrow. See, here's what I need you to know today. Suicide is a permanent, irreversible attempt to solve a temporary problem. So just like those emotions, they come crashing in, I got good news for you. They will also recede. Here's what I need you to know today. You don't have to die to end your pain. Listen, I know it hurts. I know life seems like it's caving in all around you. I know that it seems like there are no options, but you don't have to die to end your pain. Hey, Amen. You just don't. In fact, I want you to see what Jesus said. He said that the thief or the devil, Satan, comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And I'm telling you that every time that I've been involved in a suicide Coming alongside families, I have seen the fingerprints of Satan all around it. I'm telling you, it bears the, 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 the mark of the enemy. But Jesus promised, he said, I've actually come that you would have life. And not just life, not just to barely get along, but life more abundantly. Hey, everybody, don't side with the enemy. Side with Jesus. Side with life. Amen.